Hi everyone, welcome to Clinical Tips. Today we will learn how to systematically read a chest x-ray. But first, let's start by imagining a clinical scenario. You're doing your internal medicine rotation and you're assigned to give medical consultation in a local clinic. During a consultation, a 42-year-old male patient arrived for an appointment he made after having mild pneumonia two months ago. While he recovered without being hospitalized or any complication at the time, he said he's concerned something is wrong. He brings an x-ray he got yesterday. You explain to him that he got a good recovery, but you proceed to look at his x-ray anyway. What do you look for? So when we look at any imaging study, in this case a chest x-ray, we need to be systematic about it to avoid missing important information. With experience, you will develop your own system. But during this video, I will show you one of the most useful ways of reading a chest x-ray. So where do we start? The first thing you need to do is to verify that the x-rays matches the patient, whether by identity, the exam, the clinical presentation, or the physical characteristics. You need to check both the technique and the quality of the image. For our frontal chest x-rays, like the one of our patient, we assess this by looking at the inspiration, rotation, and level of exposure. We want a well-inspired chest x-ray because it allows us to assess more pulmonary structures. In a properly inspired chest x-rays, we will be able to count 10 posterior ribs, which are the ones more horizontal. For rotation, we make sure that the spinous processes are equidistant from the border of the clavicles. And lastly, we assess the level of exposure by looking at the spinal column, where we should be able to barely see the intervertebral spaces. In summary, we want an x-ray that is not too dark nor too white. After this, I like to start from outwards and go inwards. By this I mean starting with the bones and soft tissues, which are the structures that are more outer in the chest. We assess the bones for symmetry, size, fractures, and lesions. For the tissues, we look for masses or subcutaneous air. So far, we don't see any alterations in these areas. Then we assess the diaphragm. The right diaphragm should be slightly higher than the left one because of the liver, but both should be fairly symmetric. Their shape should be slightly rounded since flatness of the diaphragm might indicate airflow restrictions as seen in patients with chronic asthma or COPD. At this moment, we also look for air below the diaphragm, which is known as pneumoperitoneum, and would definitely not be normal. Continuing inward, Let's assess the lungs. They should look symmetrical and vessels should be almost invisible at the periphery. We should check for infiltrates, masses, effusion, consolidations, and other alterations. It's important to mention that a lateral chest x-rays can further assess lung fields and lobes. If you look closely at our patient lung fields, you will notice that everything is normal, which makes sense given that he only had mild pneumonia and recover quickly. This showcase why it's important to correlate patients' clinical presentation with their imaging studies. Next, we assess the trachea for deviations or external devices like a orotracheal tube, for example. We also look at the heart and gray vessels, including the vena cava, aorta, and pulmonary artery. We check that these structures are in the right locations as highlighted in the image. For the heart, it is of particular interest to look at the silhouette and the size. We should be able to see the left ventricle and the right and left atrium. We measure the size of the heart by measuring the greatest diameter of the cardiac silhouette by the greatest diameter of the rib cage. The expected normal result should be less than 0.5 or 50%. There are many alterations that can be seen on a chest extract but I hope you have learned how to systematically look at a normal chest x-ray. Remember to share this video with your friends and see you next time.